New AI chip export restrictions ratchet up the tension between China and the United States around artificial intelligence. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today, we are talking about a policy update in AI land, which is very integral to one of the key geopolitical tensions that's shaping the nature of artificial intelligence and how it gets rolled out across the world. That is, of course, the battle between the U.S. and China, and in particular, the Biden administration's attempt to keep advanced semiconductors and AI chips away from the PRC. So today we are going to talk about the new restrictions, how they close loopholes, as well as look at some other implications of this China-U.S. battle and how it's playing out in other parts of the world. But first, let's do a little bit of background. It has been about a year since the Biden administration first started imposing export restrictions on semiconductors and chip-making equipment to China. On October 7th, 2022, the White House announced a set of what the New York Times called sweeping new limits on the sale of semiconductor technology to China. Now, the restrictions came technically from the Commerce Department, but they were clearly not just focused on Chinese private industry. Indeed, a much more specific focus was an attempt to slow down Chinese military development, who, again, as the New York Times put it, use supercomputing to model nuclear clear blasts, guide hypersonic weapons, and establish advanced networks for surveilling dissidents and minorities. Basically, these rules made it so that companies couldn't supply advanced chips or chip-making equipment unless they received a special license. The U.S. government said at the time as well that most of those licenses would be denied. However, there were some workarounds. One of them was that Chinese company affiliates that were located in other countries didn't face those restrictions. And in general, bilateral trade relationships through countries, especially in the Middle East, were also seen as an area of chip leakage. Earlier this year, we saw additional actions from the White House to try to shore up some of these holes. In August, it was reported that the administration had blocked, had asked companies including NVIDIA and AMD to stop selling chips to certain parts of the Middle East due to concerns that those chips would ultimately end up with China. In that same month, President Biden also issued an executive order that banned investment in certain Chinese sectors. Basically, the executive order created two categories of investments, those that will be prohibited entirely and those that will require notification. Where those lines are drawn in areas including quantum semiconductor and AI industries is subject to a rulemaking process being run by the Treasury Department, and the administration tried to make it clear that this wasn't meant as a way to tamp down the economic relationships between the U.S. and China, but to focus on the national security security threat. Said an administration official, I want to be clear, this is a national security action, not an economic one. This executive order is aimed at narrowly protecting our national security interests. And yet still, there has been a ton of bluster that even more export restrictions were coming. Part of the delay has been that there has been real tension with the U.S. technology industry and these companies that make a ton of revenue from selling to China. Once again, the framing is the same. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo told reporters that the goal is to limit China's, quote, access to advanced semiconductors that could fuel breakthroughs in our artificial intelligence, and sophisticated computers. She pointed out again that these chips are critical to Chinese military applications. And so what are the actual changes? Well, one, in the wake of last year's restrictions, some companies, including NVIDIA, had developed specifically less powered chips designed for that Chinese market. Those chips are now banned without a license. What's more, the government has now designated what they call a gray zone of chips that are just below banned power thresholds, and which will now require notification to the government who has the power to deny their sales. U.S. chip industry group, the Semiconductor Industry Association, was not a fan of the new rules, saying in a statement, Overly broad, unilateral controls risk harming the U.S. semiconductor ecosystem without advancing national security as they encourage overseas customers to look elsewhere. Chinese officials have criticized the controls as violating international trade rules, as well as accusing them of being an attempt to constrain China's economic growth. When discussing the potential of these rules earlier this year, NVIDIA's CEO, Colette Kress, said that while the restrictions of sales on the less powerful chips to China wouldn't necessarily have an immediate financial impact because the demand would be filled by other places, she said that long-term restrictions on China will, quote, result in a permanent loss of opportunities for the U.S. industry to compete. Now, in addition to just placing more restrictions on how powerful chips that can be exported are, they've also tried to close the loophole around overseas subsidiaries. Basically, these export restrictions now include overseas subsidiaries of Chinese companies, as well as 21 additional countries. Going even farther, the Commerce Department said it's launching a rulemaking process to also restrict China's ability to act access AI compute via the cloud. Yet some people are calling for even more stringent actions. What's clear is that this is going to be a continued battle, and it's one that will shape the way the industry evolves. Now, reinforcing the urgency depending on your point of view, on the same day that this was announced, Chinese tech giant Baidu also announced its new Ernie 4.0 platform, 
with claims that it can perform at the same level as GPT-4. At the company's annual flagship event, CEO Robin Lee said that the Ernie bot is, quote, not inferior to any aspect of GPT-4. Lee showed off a number of different use cases, generating a commercial for a car, solving complicated math problems, creating a plot for a martial arts novel, etc. Now, this tool is not available to the public. So right now, we're just taking the company's word for it. But some analysts are still taking note. Charlie Dai, the vice president and research director of technology at Forrester, called Baidu, quote, the first vendor in China to claim it can perform at GPT-4 levels. He said, we need more benchmarking evidence to prove it, but I'm cautiously optimistic that this is China's GPT-4 moment, given its long-term investment in AI and machine learning. Now, when it comes to market reactions, Chinese investors did not appear particularly impressed. Baidu shares were actually down 1.4% following the presentation. Now, one more interesting dimension of the China AI story brings us back over to the UK. As you well know, the UK government under Rishi Sunak has set out to become a leader in AI policy and AI safety. As part of that, they are hosting a big AI safety summit on November 1st and 2nd, and last month faced a lot of backlash when they invited China to that event. Now, this wasn't just some generic anti-China sentiment. The reaction was specifically due to the fact that UK police had just recently arrested a parliamentary aide on suspicion of spying for China. This Chinese spying scandal was all over the UK news the exact same time as they were being extended an invite to this global summit. In response, influential MP Ian Duncan Smith had called on the government to ban China from the summit, but Sunak's government said that it was not going to rescind that invite. A few days later, it did come out that the government was considering banning Chinese officials from half of the event, suggesting that one day would be more general conversations while another day would be more more sensitive conversations, but ultimately nothing much came of that. This week, however, we did get some updates about the event. Specifically, we got more information about what the schedule was actually going to look like. On the first day, there's an opening plenary, followed by a set of roundtable discussions on topics like risks to global safety from frontier AI misuse, risks from unpredictable advances in frontier AI capability, risks of loss of control over frontier AI, risks of the integration of frontier AI into society. Basically, you can tell that these guys are not just dealing with questions of bias or hallucination, but are actually thinking about X-risk type issues. Next up is another set of roundtable discussions on improving frontier AI safety. What should frontier AI developers do to scale responsibly? What should national policymakers do in relation to the risk and opportunities of AI? What should the international community do and what should the scientific community do? The day concludes with a panel discussion on AI for good. Now, if that is the contenty day, day two is the big talking day. The only information that is given is this. The prime minister will convene a small group of governments, companies, and experts to further the discussion on what steps can be taken to address the risks in emerging AI technology and ensure it is used as a force for good. In parallel, UK Technology Secretary Michelle Donnellan will reconvene international national counterparties to agree to next steps. Adding some stress to that whole process, the BBC reported this week that German Chancellor Olaf Scholz could decide to specifically snub the event. BBC writes, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz may turn down his invitation to a major UK summit on artificial intelligence. While no guest list has been published of an expected 100 participants, some within the sector say it's unclear if the event will attract top leaders. Though no final decision has been made, it is now seen as unlikely that the German Chancellor will attend. That could spark concerns of a domino effect with other world leaders, such as the French President Emmanuel Macron also unconfirmed. The BBC piece points out that it is also not clear if China has decided to accept that invitation or not. So my friends, we will wrap there. So much geopolitical intrigue around this little technology industry we have here. And given that this summit is just two weeks away, I think you can count on a lot more in the coming days. Appreciate you guys listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.